So I'm back with part two of the Corbino effect, which was about Ohm's law in a magnetic field and how current gets deflected. This part may we are going to be talking about the resistance and how it changes due to the presence of a magnetic field. So question per le bar. Consider a thin annular metal disc of conductivity sigma and a free electron density n. A potential difference is maintained between the inner and the outer surface generating a radial current. Now the setup is placed in a uniform magnetic field B as shown in the figure which causes deflection of the electrons resulting in an additional circular current. Neglect any magnetic field due to current. Compute the ratio of the new effective resistance which is in the presence of the magnetic field in the setup to the old resistance which was in the absence of the magnetic field in the original setup. And how do we define the effective resistance? The effective resistance is defined as the ratio of the potential difference to the total radial current. So, if you just sort of visualize kinetically, you can imagine that there is a battery connected with the higher terminal of the battery connected to the inner surface and the lower terminal of the battery connected to the outer surface. So, suppose kuch current I ja raha hai aur ye EMF V hai. This current I is going to then spread out radially. And then we can define my effective resistance as V by I. So let's see. The concept behind this question is again the correct form of Ohm's law. Usually, the Ohm's law jata hai, that is J is equal to sigma E and only E is present. But in the general case, we saw in the previous part of Corbino effect that J is equal to sigma F, where F is the net force per unit charge. For electromagnetic fields, F will include the electric force per unit charge which is the electric field as well as the magnetic force per unit charge which is the which is equal to V cross P where V is the velocity of the electrons. Once again if you haven't watched part 1 of Ohm's law in a magnetic field please do so before proceeding in this video. So, now let's the actual question ka solution. So, because the current is traveling radially outwards, the electrons will have a radially inwards velocity. And we saw in the previous part that electrons will also acquire, because of the magnetic field, they will acquire an anti clockwise velocity. This is what we had seen in the previous part. And because of these velocities, you can just take the cross product with magnetic field and taking into account that electron is negatively charged. You will have a tangential force of E VRB is the magnitude of the electron charge. You will have a radially outward force of E V theta B and the usual electric force because you have electric field from the inner surface to the outer surface. So, my aim here is to express JR completely in terms of the electric field. So, I will write down all the equations that I can. So, first of Ohm's law. In the radial direction, the electrons are traveling inwards. So, inwards is how force is electron. One is E E and one is E V theta B. So, the resultant would be E E minus E V theta B. And we need, we need F which is the force per unit charge. So, I will simply divide this by E. So, this will be my F in the radial direction, the net force per unit charge. So, I will write my Ohm's law as JR is equal to sigma F, where F is E minus V theta B. So, this is the Ohm's law in the radial direction. Similarly, in the tangential direction, kitana force hai? E VRB per unit charge kitana hai? simply VRB. So, J theta will be sigma times again the force per unit charge which is VRB. So, these are the two sets of equations for Ohm's law in the radial and the tangential direction. I have to JR calculate karna hai in terms of the electric field, but I am encountering these variables V theta and VR. But fortunately, I can express V theta and VR in terms of the current densities by writing using the equation J is equal to NEV. So, I can simply write JR is equal to NEVR 
and j theta is equal to ev theta so these are the current densities in terms of the respective velocities radial velocity and tangential velocity so these are very simple simultaneous equations i am not going to spend time or space here solving them oh i trust ki tum log kar loge and so just solve these equations and eliminating all the other variables you just express jr in terms of the electric field and you will get this equation so calculation i'm going to leave it up to you so can you see that jr is proportional to the electric field but with some constant and this expression looks very similar to the usual ohms law if i compare it with jr is equal to sigma e, the usual ohms law it is as if we have an effective conductivity here so effective conductivity kitna ho gaya sigma divided by 1 plus sigma b by any the whole square this is a pura expression so it is as if ohms law mein jo ye proportionality hai between the radial current density and the electric field that has changed by this factor so the conductivity has decreased by this factor and we know that the resistance is inversely proportional to conductivity the resistance was simply increased by that factor and that's it the new resistance is the old resistance multiplied by this factor and the ratio is this 1 plus sigma b by any the whole square so you can see that re the resistance has increased because of the magnetic field physically bhi ye soch sakte the ki resistance increase ki hoga because in the absence of magnetic field the electron was experiencing only an electric force radially inwards however in the presence of magnetic field there is an opposing force which is trying to decelerate the electron ev theta b and therefore the net force inwards has reduced matlab resistance bad gaya so ye just uh, qualitatively sochne ka tarika and mathematically we have seen that resistance will increase by this factor so i hope you guys have enjoyed corbino effect this was both the parts of corbino effect and how ohms law gets modified in the presence of magnetic field next time i am going to come up with a video from the rare series about a paradox that occurs in rldk i think you guys will really enjoy that good night